Hello everybody, my name is Steven Allison. This is Full Time Devils. This is the transfer review. This is the one video where we'll go through everything about Manchester United transfers that you need to know about in one video so you can watch it and move on with your life. The transfer window's over, Steve. Yes, I know it's over, but that's not stopped people talking about transfers and Manchester United has it. Right, now it's time to give a massive shout out. I've got to give a massive shout out to Arf over on Reddit. Now, Arf's allowed us to use the data that he's created and he's analysed Manchester United's transfer window, the one just gone, and he's looked at all the links, all the players and all the rest of it, and he's put together this spreadsheet which tells you who was right, who got it right, their primary source and all, everything that you need to know we'll link it in the description below and we'll put it in the comments as well below massive shout out to Arv now if you're not on Reddit you're missing out to be honest because Reddit's an awesome place an awesome resource for Manchester United fans there's like 80,000 members of the Red Devils Reddit group and we'll link that below too go and check it out it's a, it's a great place you see full time Devils videos on there being discussed outside of YouTube you'll see people that are throwing links in there it's a great place to collate everything that's worth talking about for Manchester United definitely recommend you check it out now what Arthur's done is he's put all of this data in and let's I'll just give you some of the headlines on it and you can go and check the rest of it yourself 496 links to players 100 players linked now we signed four players didn't we so that's 96% lies now even if I'm being generous on the journalists and saying Manchester United was negotiating with two players for everyone that we signed that's still 92% absolute nonsense from all the journalists now he's told you is the one that are most accurate BBC Sport 100% accurate with the rumours that they reported. That's special. That's unbelievable. So definitely worth keeping an eye on on uh, BBC Sport. And shout out to Stoney, one of our mates over there at the BBC. He's been getting them absolutely bang on. And then look at this. The usual suspect. A bowler, Metro, etc, etc, etc. 0% on the rumours that they originated with. Definitely worth checking out this spreadsheet. So the window closed last week, but that doesn't stop the reporting of transfers, does it? So the first one that we've got is Arnaud Pugmal. Now this is a 16 year old wonder kid was the, the name he was being given in Spain. It seems like a lot of the Spanish clubs are definitely pissed off that he's come to United. Now it's been reported by the MEN that it's just been confirmed. He was waiting on international clearance. The kid's been here about three months already. I've seen him a couple of times around. He hasn't played in any of the public games yet. He played against Real Madrid a couple of months ago and he played in one of the behind closed doors games. We haven't actually seen him play, but that now should all change. And by the sounds of it, he's a very exciting player to be getting in. So the mirror of going with this one, and they're quoting the star, and they're saying that Mares jetted into Manchester, or jetted off to Manchester United on deadline day to try and make a deal happen. Now. From what I was reading, he was just sitting in Paris Airport playing Snake on his phone. Like, I don't understand this one. Are they just trying to link United because it's the big name? Are they just trying to link United because Pogba was whispering to him on the pitch against Leicester? Is this the tediousness of the transfer links that we're actually getting now? Now, yes, Riyad Mahrez would be a great signing for United. He adds a bit of balance to that right-hand side for me, but there's no basis in this. It was clear that he tried to move. He was coming out of Algeria training to try and force a move to someone. But do you know what? It hasn't come through. Who has it? It could have been Barcelona, could have been Arsenal, could have been United, could have been a host of clubs. So the fact that they're linking him to United when United, you know, haven't really made any sort of noises towards him, not buying it, to be honest, not buying it at all. So we've got some absolute stellar journalism here from the star. Now, they're using a Mark Ogden tweet to make a news story and linking United to Balotti again. This is ugh, so frustrating. So all Ogden says is United's third choice centre forward, Balotti, starts for Italy. Second choice was on the bench. Yeah, and like this is, yeah, this is kind of like how it feels in terms of common knowledge. The star decide this is article worthy. What is happening to journalism in this country? I ask you, honestly. Eric Dyer, Eric Dyer was linked with United quite a lot of the summer. It seems like he was not the first choice probably behind Matic. Now, he is a versatile player, can play centre-half, can play defensive midfield. It's the sort of signing that you think would be pretty useful if he was intent on playing three at the back. Very versatile player, pretty decent player as well, if I'm being honest. Is he on the level of Matic? Not sure. Um, so the MEN, when he was asked about what happened with Manchester United, he gave the typical answer that a player will always give in that he basically said nothing. And he just said, I think it's my job as a player to concentrate on playing and everything else will take care of itself. That's essentially a no comment, but a bit wordier, isn't it? And the MEN decides to turn that into a story and say, Dyer uh, reveals what happened with his Manchester United deal collapse. Like, that's not what he said! What are you lying for? Antoine Griezmann. Now, this is a player that Manchester United was heavily, heavily, heavily linked with in the summer and it feels like he was a massive part of our plans until that transfer ban came in for Athletic, Athletic Madrid. Ah, and that's not stopped the rumour since then, has it? Now, 
for me, when a journalist puts their name to it, and they're a respectable journalist, not anyone who works for the MEN, but a proper respectable journalist, when someone like that puts their name to something, then sometimes it's worth listening, and that's exactly what's not happened in this instance. So, the Mirror have got a guy who writes for them, and he's called Football Spy. So that's like, here's a load of rumours that we can't attribute to anything, but they'll get loads of clicks. That's what it feels like to me, at least, anyway. Now, when you actually read this article, which says Griezmann might be a, a target for United in January, you actually read the, the words that they're using. It says, according to reports, and then they link the MEN, which is actually linked to the Mirror. They're like part of the same company, which nonsense, essentially. And it says, the MEN say that he might be interested in a move to United. Well, I can go and ask that guy over there if he thinks that we might be interested in a move to Griezmann. It's about as valid. He might be interested, like, yeah, and he might not. He might be interested in a move to City. He might not. He might be interested in a move to Drawson's reserve team, but he might not. So what sort of nonsense reporting is that? Really sticking your neck out on the line there. Brilliant. Well done. Perisic. Now, this one's not going away either. This is the guy that I actually really thought if we, if we genuinely wanted him, we would have got him in the summer. I think he was probably second, third, fourth, fifth on the list of players that we was trying to get. We would have easily pushed the boat out for 50 million in this transfer window. Honestly, 50 million. That's almost like a free transfer at the moment, isn't it? When you've got Mbappe going for, I don't know, the world's debt, and you've got Neymar being the biggest free transfer the world's ever seen. We need to talk about that as well, actually. Is it the biggest transfer or is it the biggest free transfer? Either way, it's bent in it, what's happened. Regardless, let's stick, let's stick to the topic. Let's stay on Perisic. So Perisic is about to sign a new deal with Inter, according to the MEN, according to Toto Sport, because they don't do their own work anymore. And... They're saying that there's going to be an anti-United clause inserted into it, which is going to be that there's a 64 million euro release clause, which means United won't pay it because we wouldn't pay the 50 million in the summer. Well, that's a bit of a bold claim, isn't it? People thought that no one would pay the Neymar release fee and someone paid it. If you really want the player, you will pay the release fee, no matter how ridiculous it is. What's Ronaldo's? About a billion? Probably a beer bargain by the time next summer rolls around. That was the ins, this is the outs. Now, there's an article here by Soccer Laduma, not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, probably not, but whatever, uh, which lists the eight players that are coming to the end of their contract. Some are finishing this year, some have got the option to extend, and I think in most cases, because they're talking about Blind, they're talking about Herrera, they're talking about Shaw, basically a lot of the players that were signed under Louis van Gaal, they're all basically going to be extended regardless. So, the other players, and we're talking about um, Fellaini's one, Ashley Young is one, Juan Mata is one. There's some pretty significant names on that list that are coming to the end of their contract. Now, Michael Carrick is one as well, but at the age that he is, he's only going to get a one-year ex extension. Zlatan's one, which they didn't mention, who's only going to get a one-year extension, and I, I very much doubt Zlatan's going to extend beyond this season. This gives journalists free reign to then start talking about any of these players leaving because they're not going to sign a new contract. I would definitely expect to see Juan Mata start being linked with everyone. Now, he started most of the games this season, if not all of the games this season. He's performing very well in those games. And Herrera hasn't. And Herrera is going to be prime for a link. Now, there's obvious places where he's going to get linked to, possibly back to Bilbao, possibly to Barcelona. And I think there's a, a very real chance me and Adam talked about this on a podcast actually a few weeks ago. There's a very real chance United could be looking at a Spanish exodus. Um, Juan Mata could go at the end of this season. David De Gea can go at any point, at any time, in any transfer window with the links that are constant with Real Madrid. And De Herrera, you know, he's looking at what, 20 months or so left on, his, left on his contract. Could we about to see that whole Spanish click leave at the same time? Is that the plan? Is Juan Mata coming to the end of his contracts, being the age that he is? Is David De Gea? with that constant link to Real Madrid and is under Herrera with those fresh moves to Barcelona being on the horizon. Are we looking at what is going to be a Spanish click exit from Manchester United next summer? And are we any, in any sort of position to, to survive that? Because that's three key players in three different areas of the pitch. You've also got Rojo, which I believe is, is, uh, is, his contract is going to be up. He was signed at the same sort of time as all these guys, not mentioned in the article. I believe he's going to sign his contract. I think he loves it here. Is he part of that Spanish click? Spanish speaking, but is he part of that same click that would want to go? I don't know, but as, essentially this is going to give journalists free reign for a load of lies and a load of conjecture and a load of just guesswork, isn't it, to be fair? But that's something that I think is worth taking into account is that all of those Spanish players conceivably could go at the same time and it could be next summer. 
So this one caught everybody by surprise, and this is Andreas Pereira. So he went to Valencia on loan the day after our transfer window ended, but Spain has an extra day to register players. So he moved on loan, season on loan, but before he went, and just to calm you all down, Jose Mourinho said he could be one of the greats at the club in the future. You need to play him for that to happen, Jose. Uh, so he's gone out on loan, but he signed a two-year extension to his contract before he went. So we wish him all the luck. Um, he obviously performed very well in La Liga last season. Now he's at a better team. Can he perform even better? He's a year older. He looked great in pre-season for Manchester United. I'm excited to see what Andreas Pereira can do in La Liga with a, a bit of a better side around him this year. Marouane Fellaini. So this is a strange one because Fellaini's had such a roller coaster of a time at Manchester United that his stock couldn't be any higher. This is the highest point Fellaini's ever had in the club. He's got a manager who trusts him, a manager who believes in him and plays him at the right place at the right time. And there's constant links with moves abroad. Now, Italy was the place to be early in the window and back in January. It seemed like he was destined to be going there. Now, according to reports in Turkish football, he's got an agreement in principle to join Galatasaray on a free uh, next season. That's perfectly legal for him to do at the end of his contract. He can do that. So they also were saying in the same report, but he's also entered talks with Fenerbahce. Surely that's a death wish. If you're agreeing in principle to go to Galatasaray and then you're going to do the dirty on him and talk to Fenerbahce, you can't go to Turkey after doing that. And I don't, I'm not sure he's going to go to Turkey anyway. If Jose Mourinho continues to put the faith in him that he has, using him at the right time and playing him at the right time, why would he leave Manchester United to go and play football in Turkey? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but sometimes they don't make sense. Luke Shaw, not necessarily in the outs, but this is talking about his contract. This is reported in the Mirror, but I have seen it in other places as well. They're saying that he's got 12 months to save his Manchester United career. In reality, it feels to me like Manchester United have got 12 months to find some value in Luke Shaw. His current deal comes to an end at the end of this season. We want to extend it for another 12 months because, let's face it, we don't want to lose the £30 million that we invested in him only a few years ago. So it feels to me that United are going to make him sign a new contract just so he doesn't walk away for free if he doesn't reach that potential, get back to fitness, or even if he does. Let's say he does get back to fitness after using United's rehab for the last two years and he's anyway like, see ya, and goes off somewhere else for free. No, United are going to protect our investment of 30 odd million plus in Luke Shaw, plus wages, and uh, we're going to give him a new contract and we're going to give him all the time that he needs to get back to fitness, because let's face it, if he can get back to fitness, there's not many better. And it wouldn't be a transfer review, would it, without a David De Gea rumor. So. Here's your David De Gea rumour. Now, in the Daily Star, they're saying David De Gea might be kept at United longer because of the way United treated Real Madrid over Morata. The fact that we did the dirty on him, that we negotiated right to the final minute and it was like, yeah, we want, we want him anyway, and just left them in the lurch, meaning that he ended up going to Chelsea. That's going to stop them coming for David De Gea. Are you 11? Like, are you serious? Did you honestly think that this was going to be the case? We did them the dirty with De Gea three years ago, two years ago, when the fax machine didn't work. Surely if they was going to get pissed off about anything, it would be that, that we left them in the lurch on deadline day, like with seconds to spare. That would have done them the dirty, dirty way more than the fact that we didn't buy their second choice striker. Like, are you insane? If Zinedine Zidane wants David De Gea, he's going to go, listen, I'd, I'd like you to go and get that keeper from Man United. And they go, oh yeah, but they, they did us the dirty on Marathi. He'd be like, yeah, cool, sorry, go and get me the keeper. This is nonsense. Absolute garbage reporting, honestly. So that's it for Transfer Review this week. Thank you for joining us. We will do these as and when we can around the games. It's going to die down now until about November when they start ramping up again for the January transfer window. Uh, keep your eye out for all the transfers. Let us know in the comments. Is any that we missed? Is there any that you really want us to talk about? Get it all in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new around here. We're going for 500k by the end of the season. Thanks to Arf on Reddit and I'll see you over there on Reddit if you're a Redditor. And uh, I'm out of here. See you in a bit.